Hi, I'm Bob Daly, and this is Gulf Coast Gardening with Nature's Way Resources. And today we're going into Jones State Forest one of the largest managed urban state forests in the nation. I'm here with John Warner and Connor Mulnane. Um, how big is this forest? It's a little less than 1,700 acres. And you're surrounded, completely surrounded by residential and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and commercial developments. Right, roads, residential, housing, apartments. And so this, this area is a real gem compared to what's going on around us. Yeah, it's a great way for people to get out and touch nature, I think, and get to explore and see that it's a working forest because yeah. it's not a stagnant environment. Forests are dynamic, right. and you can't really hold a forest from going from different stages. We have to just try to manage for this type of environment for the bird. Behind us, I see a cavity in the tree up here. Mm -hmm. What is that? That is a red cockaded woodpecker cavity. It's where the um, male and female have excavated and made a nest. Right. So they only do that in living growth, old growth pine trees. I see something that looks like sap running down. Right, the that tree. candle wax looking uh -huh. stuff. And that's where the bird has gone out there and um, pecked the resin whales on the tree to act as a defense mechanism for snakes or other predators from crawling up in the nest and eating the eggs or the babies. What about the size of these trees? I mean, these are pretty big trees here. Uh -huh. Well, it's again, we're managing for the red cockaded woodpecker. Uh -huh. So they're between 50 to 100 years old. And right. they love this park-like atmosphere because they nest in the living gro old growth trees. Right, okay. To build, it takes about two years for them to build their cavity. Really? So, and they exclusively live in these old growth pine. And, and the red cockaded woodpecker is, uh, is an endangered species, right? Yes, it's endangered and it's exclusive to the Jones State Forest. So people around us will not have them in their bird feeders or their backyard. They right. usually live in the top quarter of the canopy with, right. and eat insects mostly. So what you're seeing, he's going to point to the center, it's right there because you can see where the growth rings change angles, like one's going in that direction, you can see it right there pretty good. Yeah. So there's, he passed the center, so everything that was grown really toward you know, this side of the tree where you increment board was this growth rate. And then you saw how it slowed down? Yes, I do. So, and then look at the last four or five years how the growth rings widened out. Really significant. Yeah. So again, it's a natural process. I mean, what we're doing is mimicking nature, really, in the right. process and speeding it up by managing the forest the way we do, thinning it out, not uh -huh. letting you know, not letting the trees just you know die from natural attrition. Sure. So we're managing them because again, we're managing for a endangered species, and we just can't risk them not having future stands of trees to move into the forest sure. area. So probably another 25 years, this tree will be this will be forage area for the red cockaded woodpecker. And then eventually, when they're probably 75 years old, they'll probably start nesting in this area. But right now, they're too small. You get a lot of visitors out here looking for the red cockaded yeah. woodpecker and then just yeah. visiting out in this right. area. Usually, March through July is our big birding season. Uh -huh. So we get about three to 6,000 people from all over the world. Wow. And they park their buses in RVs at the office, and they'll come out and, you know, look at the bird and then they check off their life list. Oh, okay, that's, and yeah. Then, but overall, it's about 100,000 a year come here to walk, hike, ride and horses. And that's, that's a significant yeah. amount of people. Right, and they like this open, they, we call these trails, but they're really surface roads. Right. But they like this because a lot of people aren't used to walking in forests that are like enclosed on them. Yeah. So this is a good training ground. For and them. I was looking at the map, you have a lot of these little service roads out yeah. here that people can just yeah. meander through the 15, forest. 15 miles worth of road. This is a, uh, a burn you have, uh, you have done. Can you explain that to us? So about two weeks ago, we did a prescribed burn in this area to remove the competition, the vegetation, yeah. because we need the more park-like look because of the endangered species we're managing for. So uh, this burn will will take out all the underbr underbrush, and then uh, we can see some new growth. And can you talk about that? Right. Um, so we did the burn two weeks ago, and uh -huh. then between that time and now, we've had some nice rain. Yeah. So what's coming back is a lot of the grassy 
native grasses, um, forbs right. in the area, and it makes for a healthier habitat also for wildlife. I see. Um, what about uh, fertilizer? I mean, you don't use fertilizer out here, but does this burn uh, provide some fertilizer in this? Yes, it does. It um, you know it releases the nitrogen that's is caught up in the plant and carbon, right. so it's releasing it back into the soil. And right. So that's why you have such a nice green up effect. I see. And then um, so we're probably going to be prescribed burning this area over here in a week or so. This is fully grown out here. This right. is all grown up. You see the grasses. It's it's sure. on a um, schedule. So every, about every three years we prescribe burn. So it's not out of control. You see it's nice. It's kind of got grasses. There's sure. some invasives. You see the Japanese climbing fern. I do, yes. And then you probably might see a tallow or two, but we really try to get those things knocked out. And fire is a great natural tool for that. We still have these natural areas along the creek that uh -huh. are really streamside management zones. So they are buffers to the creek. So if we got a lot of rain and the soil started washing, these act as um, sponges and filters. Now that's a natural creek that runs yes, through here. Yes, Rice Branch has been there for you know, a long time. It's a pretty creek. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you've probably had a lot of water coming through here for Harvey and Right, this areas. whole area was underwater about 10 feet when wow. during Harvey. Yeah. But, you know, again, the roots, the tree litter, everything, the vegetation mm -hmm. held everything in place. So the, it wasn't from us that soil was getting into the creek. It was mostly from off-site areas draining right. into it. Parking lots and stuff like that. Parking lots, sediment from new development, right. not having the proper filtration fencing up and things right. like that or retention. What is this space out here? What we have here is about a half acre of um, tilled for wildflowers. Pollinators are so important to our environment and the food production element and also pollinating trees, you know, trees that have flowers and are host plants for um, butterflies and birds and bats and uh, bees. So we planted this area to show the public how you can um, kind of restore an area to native wildflowers and grasses. Now these wildflowers here are going to spread all over out in this area. Right. Well, the goal is to, you know, they reseed themselves naturally and sure. start spreading. And You said something about earlier about having some kids out here? Yeah, we had um, Bush Elementary. We had mm -hmm. 160 something kids times two feet, you know, two feet per kid. <laughs> and what we did, we spread it, spread the seed out on top of the mounds, and right. then they just started from one side and they ran for about five minutes, just jumping and stomping on the trees. It was a wildflower stomp. So we have the forest, we're going to do some other public land areas. Uh, like the um, Lone Star Family Health Clinic. Yeah, sure. We're going to be doing that, and then we're going to do some schoolyards, and we're going to do some city parks. I think you have the Master Naturalist yeah, out the here a lot. Yeah, the Hartwood chapter trains out here. Uh -huh. So, and then the Master Gardeners help us with the gardens. Right. So, you know, every we have every age level out here. You can look back over in the forest. You see the larger tree back there. Sure. That is the parent tree. This was a seed tree operation. So what it was. Back in the 1980s, we had a southern pine beetle outbreak on the forest. Right. So they yeah. had to remove all the, the um, infected, tree, trees. infected trees and trees to buffer the rest of the forest. Right. So they removed them, and that left just pretty much a mess. So they had to clean it up. They probably site prepped, burned the area, yeah. and got back to the mineral soil so that those parent trees they found and scattered around, there's usually 12 to 20 per acre, those um, trees were the ones that seeded the area. So this is a little seedling yeah. that was... This from is that the parent. child of that parent yeah, tree over there. Yeah. Down in the ground here, I see a lot of uh, debris down here. Mm -hmm. This is mostly, this will act as mulch, right? And compost. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just composting. It's nature's way of composting and decay. I mean, it's in the south, like it is, I mean, this stuff just turns and, you know, we have such rich soils in this area because of the sure. composting and decay and all the organisms. Whereas, you know, if we went up to up north in Colorado, Minnesota, their um, growing season is probably only a few months long. Sure. Where ours is pretty much you have organic activity all year mm -hmm. um, with microbes and stuff. There's very seldom it's not happening. John, this is marvelous. This is a marvelous yeah. area. And I'm, more people should take uh, take advantage of this, I think. It is. I mean, I, well, I don't know how much more we can handle. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's like 100,000 yeah. people a year. Yeah. yeah. A lot of little feet stomping around. Yeah. But no, it's, it's here for their enjoyment, you know, as long as they respect it and pick up the trash. And, you know, we have a lot of Eagle Scouts. We did about 49 to 51 Eagle Scout projects last year alone on the State Forest. That is fantastic. So, yeah. and so a lot of volunteer community support. John, this is fantastic. I love yeah. this place. And thank you for being yeah. here and helping us out with this. Yeah, anytime. All right, thank you. This is Gulf Coast Gardening. Stay tuned for more with Nature's Way Resources. And remember, you can come out to Nature's Way Resources for all your gardening and plant needs.